My son was photographed in the school's toilet and images were dispersed. My son is in the sixth grade. He was on the bus coming home from school today when some kid showed him pictures of himself on the toilet with nudity. It was supposedly airdropped by an older unknown child and distributed throughout the school. I immediately called the school and spoke to the principal who assured me they would get to the bottom of it. I don't believe him, as I'm sure he's only going to try and protect the school. He asked me not to report it so that they could handle it. Yeah, no. I called the sheriff's department and I'm waiting to hear from the sheriff now. I went to press charges on any kid distributing these images of my kid. What should I do now? I am feeling helpless. Edit. To add, my community does not have a local police department. The sheriff is our only recourse. Now here are some relevant comments. One user said, You talk to law enforcement and provide a statement and documentation. Typical of schools. They don't want to involve police since they think they are above the law. I understand that a school principal is more of a school protector than a child protector. I'm not saying anything other than I don't trust the school's motives for not wanting me to reach out to law enforcement. And then user 2 commented and said, And also, the kid who did it may be facing SA at home themselves, and that needs to be investigated by CPS as well. That is an excellent point. The one child that I know that is involved has been a nasty piece of work to my kid for two years. It's heartbreaking because my son just wants to be friends with everyone. His mental health issues make him especially lonely, as I'm sure the other kids might find him odd. The fact that child chooses bullying over kindness says a lot about his upbringing. Not to get overly political, but I am in a small town in the south, and that kid and his parents are very much MAGA. Then OP replied to a comment on if this was a harmless prank done by classmates and said, A harmless prank? Are you crazy? My son is traumatized by this absolutely mortified. He should be protected as a child, and he has special needs as well. GTFO with your BS. Then OP replied to another comment on the bullying possibilities and if their son is being targeted. My son is special needs. The kid who showed him his nude picture has been bullying him for like two years. This isn't a simple, oh, he'll get over it type scenario. My son will likely never get over this. I will defer to what my son wants to do, but as soon as he got off his bus, he was crying, telling me to call the police. What if he takes his own life due to this? Did you ever consider that? Then OP replied to a comment about reaching the proper authorities, especially a lawyer and law enforcement, regarding taking a case. I called the sheriff back and got a sergeant. He said it had already been handed off to a deputy, the school resource officer, so it went right back to the school. The SRO called me and got the info and said a lot about how they won't be able to find the person who took the images and that airdrops are not traceable. I made myself clear though, the bully who showed him his own nude pictures on the bus also sent and showed these images to other children. So he was dispersing these images as well and might be willing to rat out the person who sent them if he knows who they are. I also said regardless, this kid was also dispersing the images, which is just as bad. He agreed and I also made it clear I had just gotten off the phone with an attorney. I demand a full investigation and arrests to be made. We will see. My kid is taking tomorrow and Friday off. Update. Hello all, I've got an update and it's a mixed bag. Here goes. The school resource officer just called me. He brought the bully and his dad in. He found the images on the bully's phone. The good news? There was no actual nudity as my son had his hands in his lap covering himself. I call that a win. And they believe they know who took the images, so the investigation is ongoing. The bad news is nothing will be done. The kid admitted he's been bullying my child for two years because my kid is weird. There are three separate images of my son in the stall, two taken from above and one from below. The kid had the images on his phone. He admitted to showing them around. I'm glad it's not CP, but this still can't be okay, can it? The SRO said the dad was really mad. The dad has known about the bullying because my son has spoken to him in the past. The dad was very much of the idea of them leaving each other alone, which works great on paper until his idiotic son decides it's a good idea to show these pictures to everyone he can. Where, if anywhere, do we go from here? I'm considering a restraining order, but I'm not sure if that can be done between children. Is this still considered cyberbullying or just good old-fashioned bullying? New update. So I've since spoken to the principal and the school's SRO. They ended up finding out who the photographer was. 
they had brought a lot of children into the office with their parents. A lot of tears were shed and a lot of furious parents. While he couldn't give me any details, he did make the statement that some of these kids would be returning to school and some would not be. So it would appear that there were multiple suspensions and perhaps a few expulsions. When I asked the SRO if the photographer was arrested, he said it didn't meet the guidelines to be considered cyberbullying and that somehow it wasn't enough for an arrest. I don't know how that's possible. I've been making myself busy reaching out to my state's attorney general office, and I'm still waiting to hear back from multiple lawyers. And I may not have a case, so I may be waiting forever. I've filed complaints with the school board and have just penned a rather long email to my state's ACLU. If there's any more advice out there, I am thrilled to hear it. New update. I've called so many people and have raised so much hell. I'm gaining some traction though. I've spoken to the sheriff's office once again, and I'm happy to report that they are taking my scary self seriously. They are charging the photographer. The charge is a small one, basically a peeping Tom with a recording device. The sergeant wanted tougher charges, but his supervisor wanted a charge that would stick. However, it doesn't address the whole distribution part, does it? Also, I made a post on Nextdoor, and my small community is in raged about this, and a few have taken to calling the school. Interestingly enough, another parent of a child at his school had the same thing happen to her son. She was assured by the principal that they had things under control. She was saddened to see that nothing changed, so there's a known pattern of this. Could this show negligence? A local news station has reached out to me and wants to investigate the issue and do an interview with me. I can only hope a local lawyer will see it and reach out. I need a lawyer like yesterday. Then OP replied to a comment on the possible age of the photographer who has the photograph. The photographer was like 13 or 14 years old. Then another user in the comment section said, why is the kid who took the picture not suspended for a good long time? I think he likely was. They have been at it from 7.30 a.m. until 11.30 a.m., calling in parents and wiping the phones. The principal couldn't tell me a lot, other than some kids will be returning to school while others won't be. And they found the creep that was taking the photos. Then another user commented and said, Does your school district have an ombudsman? They are meant to investigate complaints made by people. This is unacceptable. I am so sorry. Is your son part of any protected group? There may be advocacy groups that would help you. When my son was in a similar situation, writing letters, emails, keeping a paper trail, and noting each incident was very helpful. We also involved a therapist and psychiatrist. Good luck, OP. My son is disabled, and he has an IEP, which stands for Individualized Education Program. Edit. Hello, everybody. OP here, aka Mama Bear. I just wanted to thank you all for the kind words on my parenting. If you ask my son, he'd call me a mean mom for making him clean up after himself. I'm trying to raise him to be a good man and a husband one day. I'm not sure if I'd update this, but I have spoken to a lawyer, and he will be contacting me early next week. He asked me to put on hold the interview for now, depending on if he takes my case. He said that if he doesn't, I should go ahead and do it. But if he does take the case, fingers crossed, he wants to be strategic about the interview, and likely with him there as well. Timing is important, so I'd let him take the lead. Anyway, I won't give up. And yes, when I call the school and sheriff's office, they always sound scared. I can sniff out their fear like a shark smells blood in the water. And it smells good to me. Change is coming. Yo, this mom is getting it done. Unfortunately, sometimes you do have to hound and pester people, especially people in power, or uh, to, to get things done. And this was unfortunately the case. But fortunately, it seems to be working out. It just took a long time. And you know, I also learned what an ombudsman is. That's a, I've never heard that word in my life. But if you remain determined and keep sticking with it, someone will eventually listen to you and hopefully they will act upon your suggestions or request. And it seems like that is the case for OP here. So I'm happy to hear that. Next story. Story number two. My husband's ex-wife was furious. My stepdaughter called me mom. Okay, so I, 34F, married the man of my dreams last month, 44M, and he has a 16-year-old daughter from his prior marriage. I've been in her life, and she's been in mine for four years, and I've done my best to be there for her as a friend and trustworthy adult, and she's a really, really great kid. I've felt closer to her than I did any of my sisters, and I could see she looked up to me and trusted me. One more important thing, she's on the autism spectrum. I swear that's relevant. My husband and I went on our honeymoon for two weeks, and then we came back on Friday, and my stepdaughter came up to me and asked if we could talk. 
And she told me no one had ever been as considerate as I was learning how to make foods in the exact way that she liked them, or as patient with her poor emotional regulation, her words. I think she's doing great, by the way. And she told me I overall was her favorite person in her life. So she asked if it was okay to call me mom. This really, really caught me off guard, and I stopped for a moment to process it, and she got embarrassed and told me she was sorry and it was stupid. But I told her it wasn't stupid, because I would love that. She got super excited and hugged me, and it was lovely. I was telling my husband about it later, and it suddenly sunk in that I had become somebody's mom. I just stopped him and told him, I'm someone's mom, and he asked me if I feel like I was in the delivery room. <laughs> I laughed at that, but I got so emotional and overwhelmed that I started crying. This morning, she came downstairs and said, hey mom, to me, and it's gonna take some getting used to, but holy crap, that was a great feeling. I still don't believe I've earned the titles, but I'll be damned if I'm not gonna try my damn best. So, it seems that last month, I got a husband and a daughter too. Pretty good deal if you ask me. Now here are some relevant comments. User 1 said, OP was learning how to make her daughter's food the way she likes. That line jumped out at me. That she thinks the daughter is the bee's knees, and even though the daughter feels insecure about her behavior. Imagine the confidence she will feel and how validated the daughter feels. This brings me joy. Then OP replied with and said, the first time I made food for all of us, within the first month or two I knew her, I made spaghetti and broke the spaghetti in half. And she said she couldn't eat it with it broken in half. Then she told me she was sorry and would make herself a sandwich, but I told her it was okay and I could make another batch, which I did. I found out later down the road she cried after I left because she thought she insulted me and ruined her dad's relationship with her specific food preferences. Sure, it was a little strange at first, but hey, I'm sure we've all asked a waiter or waitress for something very specific at least once in our lives. Update. So. I recently made a post talking about how my stepdaughter asked to call me mom, and it made me really happy. My husband has two children from his previous marriage, a 16-year-old autistic daughter and a 26-year-old daughter. When they divorced, his ex-wife advocated for custody of the older daughter. Sounds like it was because she was more independent and less work. And he got the youngest one. As a result, his younger daughter always felt kind of unloved by her mom and doesn't go too far out of her way to talk to her. So, the older daughter finally got a job in her field that she's been fighting for for a few years, and she wanted to have a dinner with the family. She seems like a nice girl from the times I've interacted with her, but her mom seems passive-aggressive and unkind. We all got to the restaurant and sat down, and it was pretty nice and civil. I was sitting next to my stepdaughter, and she was a little overwhelmed because she hadn't been to the restaurant before and did not know what to order. So, we were looking at the menu, and I pointed out a type of pasta that looked something similar to what we make at home that she likes. Then she said, thanks mom, and I guess she said it loud enough that her biological mom heard because she literally stopped everything and asked, what did you just say? My husband and I tried to defuse the situation, but she was very agitated by it and actually asked why she did it. Their older daughter stepped in and asked if she could tell her mom about her new job, and that got her to move on finally. My stepdaughter, or daughter if you will, didn't say much for the rest of the evening, but on the way home she tried to apologize for ruining the evening, to which we told her she did not. Then, if this wasn't bad enough, Enough, both she and my husband received a four paragraph long message talking about how disrespectful and egregious it was that she called another woman mom and how she was very disturbed by it. My husband is just in disbelief and feels horrible for our daughter. He went to talk to her and she didn't say much, but she clearly thinks that this is all her fault. If anything, it's my fault for not discussing how she should refer to me at the dinner with my husband and then discussing it with her beforehand. I just effing hate that this woman is upsetting her so much and I see why my husband divorced her. Thank you for reading. Now here are some more relevant comments. One user said, does the ex spend time with her autistic daughter at all? If not, I'm not sure why she would be surprised. She sees her on holidays and family gatherings, and that's really it. Apparently, her mother is entitled to that respect just for existing. Then, user 2 commented and said, I know it's not the same, but I was called mom at work. I don't have children, but apparently I exude mothership. Hopefully not in a bad way. As for the ex-wife, she is a real piece of work. It's nice that you took on taking care of a special needs child. It is no small feat, and you are deserving of the title of mom. Mom. Definitely. I have no sympathy for a woman who demands to be called mom while putting in no effort to be mom, or a man who demands to be called dad. Also, I just want to say, yeah, she technically is a special needs child, but she's very capable. She has been looking to apply for an after-school job and has started thinking about college. And while she does struggle with emotional regulation and has very specific preferences for things, she's no different from the rest of us. Then user 3 commented and said, that poor girl. If her mom acted like a mom, then it wouldn't have happened. Her actions or lack have consequences. 
I'm not sure if she has a therapist, but it might help explain things in a way that she gets from a professional. The biggest thing I would be worried about now is if her mom keeps sending things to her or making her feel guilty about more things. She does have a therapist who she meets with weekly. I'm sure my husband's ex-wife is going to come up tomorrow. And then finally, user 4 commented and said, How long since the biological mother gave away her daughter's custody? How much time does she spend parenting her? How have they bonded? She would have some nerve to be angry that a child she is not parenting as much as you calls you mom. You seem to be very sweet and patient to her. Keep it up. Since elementary school, on holidays and family gatherings, by awkwardly asking how they've been doing since last Thanksgiving. My husband got custody of the young autistic child and learned how to make foods exactly the way she needed them to be. Learned how to speak her language, as he calls it, and sit and single-handedly raise a still developing child. Then his ex-wife got custody of the high school who could be left alone at home and make her own food so she could work and do her own thing without having to worry about anyone or anything. New update. So the day after the incident, my stepdaughter came over to me and told me her older sister texted her and asked if she could read the text out loud. I just nodded and said definitely, but on the inside my eyes rolled to the back of my head like Jesus Christ, here we go. However, her sister sent her a very, very lovely and thoughtful message saying she felt bad about what happened the night before and was sorry the two of them haven't been talking much lately and asked if she wanted to try and be sisters again. Then she said she asked her what movies she's seen lately, and movies is her special interest by the way so that meant a lot that she asked. Not gonna lie, I was caught off guard by her sincerity and kindness. It was very, very sweet. Then later that day, I got a text message from her older sister, who I assume got my number from my younger stepdaughter, and said she wanted to get to know me better, since I am legally her stepmom now. And I am the woman her baby sister is calling mom, as she says, so she definitely wanted to try to get to know me. She also mentioned that she didn't get to celebrate her sister's 16th birthday with her, and she felt that was a really big deal, and asked if the three of us could get dinner and see a movie together. Tonight, the three of us went out and saw a movie and got dinner by ourselves. My younger stepdaughter picked the movie, and she loved it, but my older stepdaughter and I didn't get it, but all that matters is that she liked it. Then we sat down and had dinner together and had a very, very nice time. Then on the way out, my younger stepdaughter asked if she could run into the store next to the restaurant to buy something really quick, in and out. So we said, all right. While she was in the store, my older stepdaughter told me she wanted me to know that she misjudged me, and watching the two of us interact both at dinner, tonight, and the other night, she completely understands why I am now mom to her. All in all, a pretty good night. After I got home, I saw she sent me a text message related to something we talked about, so looks like we're going to be talking now. Still got some stuff to work out with her biological mom, but we will take this as a victory. Anyway, yeah, I just figured I'd share something positive since there is a lot of negativity on Reddit, and with my current situation, I figured I would share a positive update. Now here are some more relevant comments. One user said, Aw, I read the last post when it happened. I am so, so happy about this development. I'm so happy your daughter is being supported by her older sister and your family feels like it grew a bit more. Congrats, and thanks for the wholesome update. Yeah, it made me really happy to hear they were talking again. I left this out in the post, but I remember a few months ago, my younger stepdaughter was trying to tell her sister about a movie she saw that meant a lot to her, and her older sister was being very sarcastic and snarky about it to get her goat, and she actually started crying. So I think it's great that they are now getting along. So everyone, I'm a little sick, so you'll have to excuse me if I don't exude my 100% optimism, but I am still happy to read this post and I'm glad that we got something positive. As for the mother, I'm gonna be honest, I understand having that emotional reaction, be like, wait, what did you just say? But like OP said, maybe they could have uh, uh, discussed it beforehand with the husband, or maybe eased the biological mother into it. I don't know. I'm not justifying the biological mother not parenting her child, but you know, it's kind of shocking, even if you are a terrible person. So I understand why she has that reaction, but I don't approve of what she's doing, which is nothing. But if they can hopefully get that worked out or talk talk to the biological mom, or at least tell her to talk to the hand after attempting to, I would say everything's gonna work out for this family, and it seems like it is. Anyway, next story. Story number three. My stepdaughter said she hates me, so I'm not bringing her on my trip. I, 28F, married my 37M husband four years ago when his daughter was 11. She's 15 now, almost 16. Her parents have been divorced since she was seven years old. She still sees her mom regularly, and they have a great relationship. I know I will never be her mother, and I have never tried to take on that role, nor force her to look at me that way. The problem is, she doesn't like me at all. Since she was 11, she's made it clear I am not her mom. She rolls her eyes at me, ignores me a lot of the time, tells me I'm not her mom, etc. Her mom and I do get along. 
She will call me if she needs me to take my stepdaughter to practice instead because she has a new baby. We're not best friends, but we do keep in touch for the sake of her daughter because her dad travels a lot for work, so I am the sole parental figure for her. I don't try to force my stepdaughter to spend time with me, but sometimes I do suggest we go shopping, watch a movie, etc., especially when her dad travels out of town for a few days. I am always shut down. This brings me to last week. I had to go into her room to put more towels in her bathroom, and she's been a little down because her boyfriend broke up with her. I knock and she lets me in, and I see that she's watching Love is Blind, and I say, oh, I'm watching this right now with Anna, my niece. I'm an episode behind you, but I'd love to watch it with you. She ignores me, and I put the towels up in her bathroom, and when I'm leaving, I say, I have snacks downstairs. I also got new face masks if you want to try them out, or we can just talk if you want someone to vent to, because we are both into skincare. Care, and I know how hard a teenage breakup is. She then pauses her TV and says, Stop effing trying to be my mom. I don't like you. You're just my dad's wife. I have a mom and you mean nothing to me, so stay the hell out of my life and stop trying to get me to do things with you. I want nothing to do with you, weirdo. Then she shoos me out of her room and slams the door in my face. I will admit that I cried a little. My niece slash goddaughter is graduating high school this year, and when we were watching Love is Blind, she said she would love to go to the beach because she's never been, and that she wants to go on a good vacation before she starts college, so we started making plans. I am paying for the both of us. Her mom says she wants to go and she will pay for herself. My niece also asked if her best friend could come, and I said I'd cover the hotel and plane, but her parents will have to pay the rest. Yesterday, when I was searching and calling around for hotels and amenities and things to do, my stepdaughter comes down and hears me. Her dad walked in and she goes, are we going on a vacation? He says, I don't think so, are we Sarah? Then I say, I'm taking my sister, niece, and her friend as a graduation present and she asks her dad if she can go, and he asks why I didn't ask her. And I say, We made this plan when I asked her if she wanted to watch a show with me and my niece, and she told me I'm not her mom, and she doesn't want to do things with me, and she wants nothing to do with me. And then they tried to make excuses, and I say, I can't be your friend slash parent when you want me to do things for you, but you treat me like crap any other time. She went and called her mom, and her mom called me, and I explained what happened, and what she said was, she was shocked about what her daughter said to me, but she understood completely. She she told my stepdaughter that she will take her on a trip when she graduates, but she missed out by acting that way and she can't force me to take her. My husband says I should get over it and take her, but I don't think I'm in the wrong. Now here are some relevant comments. User 1 said, not the a-hole, but I am curious why you would marry someone with a kid that clearly does not like you. That's a terrible deal either way, and it's telling when the parent doesn't care enough to at least try and fix the problem beforehand. Based off the husband's response, he enables your stepdaughter's behavior, so not sure how how you expect this all to play out. My stepdaughter was not so open about not liking me until she hit 13. We were cordial, I think. That feels like something I'd say about two adults, but I knew that she wanted to be left alone because her parents had divorced and I know how hard it is because my parents got divorced. So I did not pressure her into talking with me. I hope this is making sense, but when she was 11, I was not being verbally assaulted like this. She just really kept her distance and kept conversations to a minimum. Then user 2 said, I love when spoiled children run up against the consequences of their actions. You're better than I am, OP. I wouldn't even give her another chance. She hates me? Great, no more presents, money for field trips, allowances, favorite meals made by me, or anything else really. If she decides to, she could try and earn back my regard, but I tend to ignore people that hate me. And once she turns 18, I would start treating her as an adult I don't like, but I am also very vindictive. I have thought about going down that route after she said that, but I am also a kid of divorced parents, and I know how hard it can be when your parents start dating someone new. So I never fed her for that, because I was the one in that position as well. But I feel like she is 16 now, and she says what she says, and she can mean what she mean properly, so she has to deal with those actions. Update. The next day. I took some of the people's advice, and I had to sit down with her, her father, and her mother to talk about boundaries and clear rules of what I will not tolerate anymore. I am still standing firm that I am not taking her on this trip because I am not going to award bad behavior and verbally abusing me, and I don't want to deal with that on the trip. I do not want to be miserable on a trip that's for my niece and celebrating her graduation. When my husband goes out of town, she will be staying with her grandmother or mother. I will no longer be parenting her here since she does not want me to do anything for her, and I will not until her attitude changes. 
I said that maybe she needs to go back to therapy, and her mother and dad agreed. I told her once again that I know she has a mother and doesn't need another one, and that was never my goal to try and come in and replace her mom. I just wanted to be a parental figure. My husband did apologize for not having my back and controlling this behavior before. I said that I may not be her mom, but I am her father's wife, and I need basic respect. She doesn't have to like me, but I will not tolerate her disrespect. They both asked her to apologize for what she said, and she scoffed and rolled her eyes. She stormed off, and her mother and father went after her to scold her. We also agreed to go to family therapy. I told them that I will not be asking her to do things with me, like go to the mall or look for a birthday present for her dad. But if she comes to me with a changed attitude, then I will be more than happy to do so. Her mother said she will be talking to her privately about how her actions have consequences, and that this was a small thing compared to what may happen in the real world. I do realize I should have been more vocal about the mistreatment, but I didn't want her to dislike me any more than she did, but I see that was not the correct decision. And hopefully we can come to some sort of, I can't really think of the word or phrase, but hopefully we can be cordial. Now, here are some more relevant comments. One user said, well, I can understand where her anger is coming from. She was half your age when you married her dad and you've only been married four years. Dad is constantly gone and mom has a new baby, so she's pawned off on you all week. I can see why she's feeling abandoned and like they're forcing you to be her new mom. I'd give her some slack. Teenagers say stupid stuff when they're going through stuff, and she's going through a lot. Did you knock on her door before going in, or did you just walk in? Teenagers need to feel like they have their own space. Maybe she had just been crying and snapped at you because her actual parents weren't anywhere to be found. Come on, I remember what it's like to be a teenager, and it's farther away in time for me than it is for you. I think setting more hard rules is a really bad idea and will only breed more resentment here. She learned the lesson that you can't treat someone like crap and then expect something gifted to you from them for no reason. Why don't you ask her where she wants to live during the week when dad's gone? Has anyone ever done that? You made a comment, and still getting the same response after trying to explain why I'm in the wrong is really funny. I'm not trying to be her mom, never was, never will. As for connecting with her, I have tried. This last time I tried, I was verbally talked down to and told to stay out of her life. So why should she want to go on this trip if she doesn't like the person hosting it? And then OP replied to another comment and said, If he wants to take her on a trip, he can. I'm not barring her from all vacations ever, just this one to celebrate my niece that I am paying for. She's not coming. I don't know what she and her friends do because she does not let me in on that part of her life, and I don't ask because she's made it clear that she doesn't want to speak about any of that with me. I only asked if she wanted to talk about what she was going through because I know how lonely it can feel going through a breakup and not have anyone to talk to you. So guys, I'm gonna call myself out here and say I was ready to write off this girl, the, the stepdaughter, but also she's 16. I'm not excusing her behavior, and that one comment made a, a fair point that you kind of do have to see some things from her perspective. I'm not approving of what she did, and she could be way better, and I was not anywhere near that horrible at 16, but, you know, she, her mom is over here, her dad is over there, and then it's like, here's this new lady, and I'm like, well, what about my actual mom and dad? It doesn't seem like OP, or, I mean, pardon me, it doesn't seem like the stepdaughter gets her actual parents much. I can understand wanting your actual parents and then getting this new lady, and that kind of sucks. But I think uh, the stepdaughter does need to go to therapy, family therapy, and learn that, you know, this woman, OP, is not her enemy. And also, this is coming from somebody who got a stepdad when I was in high school, and I was nowhere near like the stepdaughter was here. Will the stepdaughter change her behavior? I don't know, but it seems like some measures are being put in place. Thankfully, the dad has been made aware of what he was doing or not doing, and the biological mother and the stepmother, OP, being uh, on a good basis is really good, so I'm glad to hear that. But anyway, what do you guys think about this story? I'm gonna go drink a lot of orange juice. I'm still sick. But thank you for watching. Bye-bye!